Hello YouTube, what is going on? Captain Nick 88 here, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do grouping and text movement inside of Panzoid Clipmaker 2. Let's get straight into the video. Okay guys, so here we are in Clipmaker, and we have our text, and let's pretend we have particles uh, here as well. Um, I'll show you how to do this real quickly. So here's your text. You don't want to rotate it each individually, right? And and you don't want to have to, cause when you and when you also rotate your text, it doesn't appear that the camera is moving. It just appears like the text is rotating, cause the particles aren't moving and all that type of stuff. So to fix this, we're gonna add an object and it's gonna be a group. Okay, we're gonna call this like uh, text or whatever you want to call it, and just drag. The, the text, the clip makers, or whatever it is, into the group. So now when you rotate the group, it rotates both the text first off. And you could apply this to OBJs, you could apply this to basically shapes, anything, anything in Clipmaker you could apply it to. So let's pretend that I deleted it, right? And let's pretend I created a group. Um, so let's say this is my text group and this is my particle group, right? I put my particles all into a group. Okay, so it's much more clean now, right? And uh, like I said, to add them, you just click Add Object, Group, and then you title it and drag the stuff inside of it, like I showed you with the text. Okay? So we're just going to enable this now. So let's say this is what our our Lightroom looks like. Okay, it has our text and it has our particles. So if we rotate the text individually like I said it's not gonna look correct see it looks kinda weird and it doesn't appear that the camera's moving it appears like the text is rotating uh, like if we just rotate the particles it just looks weird it doesn't even look like it just looks cringy it just stop and if we rotate if we put those two groups into another group and we rotate that group now you'll see it appears like a camera movement text movement type of thing and that's all due to grouping so you really need those groups to actually make your intros better um, a lot of people I've seen a lot of people who use uh, who make intros they don't have grouping they don't group their text and particles or OBJs or whatever and they don't rotate them all together and it just looks really weird when they only have their text rotating and they're syncing to it and it's just it doesn't look correct because you're looking at the same particle background and it's just it does not look right but now now you guys know if you're watching this video and you didn't know how to do this if you put them in groups and you put all those you put the particle group and the text group into a control group or an all group and you rotate that it appears like the text the, the uh, camera is moving around the text which is very very nice so now that you know this, now let's begin our text movement in uh, the, the, the program or whatever. So you're going to have a song and you're going to play it and you're going to see when the first base. Well, actually first, let's let's begin like this. Put uh, these, these values on uh, where you want the text to begin. So I'm just going to put like 720 or something like that. So that's where the text is going to begin. It's going to open or fade in with this look. Okay, and let's go to the first bass drop and let's find that. So it's about right here, correct? And correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, here's rotation, and we're gonna add a keyframe. And basically, what you're gonna do is you're just going to go to the next set of numbers or wherever you want the text to be, or where the camera, so called. Uh, to be at this point, so we're just gonna. Um, for me, I'm gonna go very simple in this intro. I'm just gonna set it to zero, zero, zero. Um, just very, very simple. And if you click this like Z button, kind of, it's it's set on linear. Um, that means it's going to from the first keyframe to the last keyframe, it will be moving. Okay. Um, quadratic in. So the ins are, uh, you'll see quadratic in, cubic in, quartic in, quintic in, sin, sin, sinusoidal, I don't even know how to pronounce that, and then exponential in. And then you're going to also see the corresponding outs. So uh, quadratic out, cubic out, quartic out, quintic out, whatever the hell that is out, exponential out, 
And then you're also going to notice that there's an in out which combines them. What the ins do is it makes the movement of the um, the keyframes start off slow and go fast faster towards the end. Each of these has a little graph next to it, okay? And you can use that graph to uh, determine um, which one's fastest. So you're gonna notice that this one, this graph is very cl is much closer to the linear one than the exponential is, where it's this one's like flat and it shoots up. So that's gonna help you determine how you want this. So if we play this in linear, boom, it just goes straight there, right? Now let's say we uh, make it cubic in. It's gonna start slower and hit harder at the end. Um, well, let's say we go with exponential. Let's say we go with uh, cubic out now. It'll go faster at the beginning and slower at the end. And the in out is basically just combining both of them. I'm gonna do qu quadratic in. Okay, and that's that's how you do like that's that's what the quadratics in and like all that stuff means. You're also gonna notice the interpolation, which is the thing next to it. It either is a dome or like a pyramid or triangle shape. Uh, right now, it should automatically on default be on the dome. Now let's say you go to your um, your second base uh, hit or whatever. I'm gonna find it. All right, so it's like right here, and you're just going to add it, right? So notice how both these keyframes are set to zero, but when you play it over, see that? See that? It like rotates. It it makes the animation continue very smoothly instead of stopping abruptly so if I go back to the new keyframe and I change the uh, interpolation to the the static one and I play the animation again it'll just stop right there because it knows hey it's already at zero 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 I'm also at zero 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 so there's no need for any other motions so you can really uh, use this however you'd like in intros. You can have a little bit of uh, smooth or you could have some, some statics, all static, all smooth. I tend to go with smooth because it just looks nicer. And uh, you could just do another animation here as well if you would like um, cubic in, uh, cortic in. And it'll also... So you could do something like that. And you just go through the animations all the way to the end. I'm not going to, though, because I'm very lazy. Um, so for me, I'm just going to kind of go like this and like that. There you go. And it should end. There you go. And uh, that's basically how you do a false camera movement. And that's how you... And that's why it's related to grouping. So now that you guys know how to group, now that you know how that affects your camera movement or um, your text movement or whatever, uh, tell me if this helped you down in the comment section, like the video if it helped. Um, I tried to go over your the interpolation because that's also very, very important. I didn't want to go too in depth on just making camera movement. I wanted to show you guys interpolation and like the, um, I don't know what this would be called, honestly, easing. Okay, easing. I wanted to show you guys that as well. So now that you guys know how to, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. And until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. Peace and bye-bye.